Yeah, there are some results that they're being a consequence of how the MLS is improving through years, you know, and I think, like I said it in so many interviews, I think both leagues need uh, to learn from each other, you know, because they both have a lot of positive uh, things and, uh, and, and other ones that they need to improve, obviously, but yeah, of course, we're going to go on Wednesday, try to win, and yeah, of course, I think the, ML the La Liga MX has been in this uh, sport longer and they need to, to improve in so many things, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be a competitive game. Like Uh, thank you so much to our all-stars who are participating in our press conference today. We have with us Walker Zimmerman, welcome. Javier Chicharito Hernandez, welcome. And of course, head coach of our all-stars, Adrian Heath. So with that, we're going to actually go straight into questions. And our first question for you all today is going to go straight to our two athletes. And it's going to come from Theo, uh, Radley Theo, Theo, Theana? Theolian, thank you so much. Radley is one of our Special Olympics athletes that also has a podcast, and if you're looking to follow him, his podcast is Rad Sports Talk Show, and you can get it on Spotify. Radley is going to be participating in our Special Olympics All-Star Game on Wednesday at 3.30, and if you're interested in watching that All-Star Game, that'll be available on ESPN3. So to kick off our All-Star press conference, we'd like to welcome Radley for the first question to Javier and Walker. So my question to you guys is, does it mean to be an all MLS All-Star to you? It's always an honor uh, to represent the league, represent your club team and your city. So it's a really fun event. It's, it's great to receive that recognition, but also to play with some of the best players from around the league. So it's a, it's a really special opportunity, and I think it's one that you know everyone here doesn't take for granted. Yeah, like, like like Walker said, it, it's yeah, it's an honor, it's a pleasure. Always uh, been very grateful to be over here, and like he said, not training with amazing coaching staff, amazing players that they deserve to be here, and it's a great experience. Not every day you see all all of this uh, amount of people over here, all the stuff that we're gonna do, regardless that probably we will prefer to play only a game and go home, but we know it's part of the job, and it's yeah, it's a great experience. It's a great way to. To connect as well with a lot of fans, you know, in this kind of events, because I think it's the main, the main, the main reason. Sorry that uh, MLS and the Liga MX are doing this this event. Thank you so much. For those in the audience, please raise your hand, and we'll get to as many questions as we can. We're going to start over here. Hey, Andy Greeter with the St. Paul Pioneer Press. This question is for Walker. Obviously, you know, this showcase is a, a lot of uh, America versus Mexico, Liga MX. Uh, you know, MLS and, and U.S. and Mexico on the CONCACAF stage as well. What did you learn about the competition in last year's game, and what are you expecting uh, in tomorrow or Wednesday's game? I think, you know, judging off of last year, it, it's a competitive atmosphere. You know, the, the game is not something that you see in a typical all-star game, whether that's the NBA, baseball. This is, it's very competitive. And so I think... Having it uh, last year in L.A., um, the fans were all behind it. It was passionate, and then we wanted a PK shootout. So now we're looking to run it back, um, and it's, it's a great game with certainly a high level of competition. And, again, you don't see that all the time in an all-star game. We're going to go right here back in the middle. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alonso Contreras from Ari Sport Network. It's for all of you. Uh, last year, you, uh, the MLS beat uh, Liga MX and also the Seattle Sanders won the Champions League on CACAF. So this is an opportunity for you. Uh, do you think that this opportunity for you keep proving the MLS is growing and is better at some point for Liga MX? Uh, yes, obviously. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, there are some results that are being a consequence of how the MLS is improving through years, you know? And I think, like I said it in so many interviews, I think both leagues need uh, to learn from each other, you know, because they both have a lot of positive uh, things and, uh, and, and other ones that they need to improve, obviously. But yeah, of course, we're going to go on Wednesday, try to win. And yeah, of course, I think the, ML the La Liga MX has been in this uh, sport longer and they need to, to improve in so many things. But yeah, I mean, it's going to be a competitive game, like Walker said it. And hopefully, yeah, we can go, we can win. And that's why we're in this league, try to help, try to give everything that we can on and off the, the field so this league can keep improving day by day. Back here with Roberto. Uh, Javier, uh, Roberto Abramovich from Especialistas del Deporte. 
As you know, the Mexican fan base is the largest soccer fan base that we have here in the United States, and yet um, there's still a lot of doubting by the fan base about the quality of MLS, no matter how many times MLS has done better and better against teams in uh, Liga MX. What, can, what is it going to take for Mexican fans here and then via TV in Mexico, what is it going to take for them to appreciate what this league can do and uh, appreciate the quality and become fans of teams of this league and not just follow teams in Mexico? I mean, it's, very, it's a very difficult question because I don't think the answer is that easy just to mention one thing. And I guess, I guess it's going to be time, patience, and I mean, we were talking that as well in 2002, one of the most difficult days uh, for Mexico, like national team happened and MLS wasn't like even as big as it was now, you know? So just to put an example of that, like growth, it's something that it takes time. It takes time to develop and it takes time to as well accept sometimes in, 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 in the mindset or in the minds of a lot of people, you know? But yeah, that's evolution. That's part of life that a lot of things are, are evolving. You need to adapt and you need to accept that competition is something that makes you better. You don't need to feel threatened by it. You need to feel that it's something that is going to make you better and better and better. And we always been neighbors. You know, it's like, I'm, it's a little bit even like super, like very surreal, this situation. I'm a Mexican guy representing the MLS, you know, even as a, as a captain against the La Liga MX, you know, it's like, they're great areas that we need to, to mention. And I mentioned the 2002 because it's a very like far date and it was a World Cup match and they, they went farther than we went, and I wasn't even in the, in, the, in the first division. So we need to be more of a gray area. We need to take the best out of each league. We need to take the best out of things and not stay in this narrative of like heroes and yeah, guilty persons and white and black and et cetera and et cetera. We need to be more like positive, to have that narrative, and of course, competing wise on Wednesday or even in the skill challenge that I'm going to be involved tomorrow, I'm going to try to win. That's part of this competition, like Walker said, and I'm going to mention it a lot, it's, it's, not, it's not that easy. People think that we come over here just to have a fun time, and no, we come here. It's part of our jobs. We're very grateful. We're very honored to be here, and I'm sorry to, to keep talking that much. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but yeah, I think I, I want to, to have that narrative that Liga M M MX has so many things that we, we need to praise as the same as MLS, and then these type of events are going to help us both like keep growing. And I'd like to pose a question to Coach. Mm -hmm. So, Coach, that's a lot of passion that we hear about coming out and competing, and you're in charge of, of getting it done on the field with them as in the formation. Can you tell us a little bit about your strategy there? Well, I think the most important thing is the reason these guys are where they are is because that's their nature. I guarantee you these two have got that competitive nature since they were this big and started playing the game. That's why they've made the careers that they've made. Adding a little bit to that question, I think from being from Europe, and coming here 13 years ago, I've seen and been on the outside and watched it. I think this is the closest, closest that MLS has ever been to Liga MX. I think years ago, I think 13 years ago when I arrived, the gap was pretty big, but it's been continually closed and closed with the investment that the, the clubs have put into the clubs now in the US. I, I see one of the Federation guys said it's in the last 12 years, it's gone up 600%. So. You know, there's been incredible investment in the, the teams in the US, which is down to obviously the ownership groups. And I think it's only good that it's getting closer because I think long term, actually, this will be good for Liga MX as well. The fact that the US are getting closer and the leagues are getting bigger, buying more players, competing now for the same players to buy, I think it's only good for the, in terms of the competition. Thank you so much. We're actually going to try and go to a question um, from one of our participants that's online. Charlie Bohm, we have opened up your line. You should be good to answer, ask a question now. Sorry, man, can you, can you speak a little bit louder? Sorry. Let's have it repeat if we can turn up the yeah. audio in the room just a little Sorry, bit louder. Man, it's not my first language. I want to hear properly. Yeah. Thank you. I don't want to just mention one guy. I mean, playing against uh, a league that I 
play for a short period of time, but that helped me to open the big doors to, to have an amazing career uh, afterwards. I think, uh, yeah, with any Mexican player that is going to be very, and I, and I can speak in their behalf, they're going to be very excited to come over here to be part of this uh, event, to be recognized as one of the, of the best players in their league. So, yeah, I mean, and, and like I said, it, I have so some, some many like players like, like Walker that we play against uh, not only in, in, the, in the MLS as well in the national team, you know, so and then we're here trying to, to, to get the win on, on, on Wednesday. But I mean, any, all the players, I'm very excited to play because of, like the coach said it, I think everything is very good to the, to the improvement and the growth for, for every league and every player and every team. And we're going to go here in the middle. ¿Qué tal? Este, Hugo Ramírez de TUDN, una pregunta para Javier Hernández. Eh, te veíamos en el entrenamiento, bueno, en el regenerativo con, con Carlos Vela, este, eh, la sensación de reencontrarte con un compañero e, e indudablemente muchos de acá pensamos, vaya, dos jugadores que, con calidad que posiblemente por diferentes razones, pero en selección mexicana. Este, la pregunta también iría con eso. Este, nuestro compañero nos ha dicho que Gibran Araige de TUDN, también que ya sostuviste algunas reuniones con el Tata vía este, internet o vía Zoom, llámese como se llame. Este, ¿Qué nos puedes decir de, de esas reuniones? Si alguna, alguna, todavía hay esperanza, digamos, tú, de, de tu parte de estar en el próximo Mundial de Qatar 2022. Y mucho éxito, Javier. Gracias. Gracias. Eh, bueno, la respondo en español, ¿verdad? Me imagino. Este, Feliz de estar con, con, con Carlos, de poder compartir, aunque sea en un tiempo muy corto, vestidor obviamente con, con él, no nada más es y ha sido un gran compañero, sino es un, es un gran amigo, ¿no? hemos tenido muchísimas experiencias desde infantiles a lo largo de nuestra carrera, mundiales juntos, eh, muchísimas eh, anécdotas y momentos muy, muy divertidos y también muy, muy profundos, entonces feliz, feliz de estar con él, obviamente tenemos una relación desde, desde hace años. Y luego con el otro tema, yo siempre lo he mencionado, yo siempre estoy abierto, he tratado de hacer lo mejor que ha estado en, en mi cabeza, en las decisiones que he tomado, hacerlo dentro y fuera del campo para, para, bueno, para seguir eh, primera, primeramente que nada haciéndolo de la mejor manera en mi equipo este, y de ahí por consecuencia si llegan los, los llamados o no, eso le corresponde al entrenador. Yo siempre seguiré, como lo he mencionado, eh, abierto a cualquier posibilidad, si no yo me hubiera retirado de la selección, entonces todos sabemos que es un honor y es un orgullo representar a la selección. Y bueno, ahorita estoy nada más, más que enfocado en este evento tan, tan bonito y que estoy tan, tan agradecido de que, de que se me haya tomado eh, en cuenta y ya veremos en el futuro. Yo seguiré haciéndolo de la mejor manera dentro del campo, fuera de él también lo, lo, lo he tratado de hacer de la mejor manera en lo que han sido eh, mis decisiones y en mi, y en mi criterio y bueno, y ya veremos en el, en el futuro. Just a reminder for those that are both in the room and joining us virtually, we will have a transcript that comes out afterwards, and that will be fully translated uh, into English. So if you're looking for responses, that will also be available. We're going to come down here with Jerry. Jerry Zagoda from Star Tribune. Question for Adrian. Have you ever coached in an All-Star game before, and how much coaching can a coach do in a game like this? First of all, no. It's something new for me, something I'm really excited about, something I'm uh, really looking forward to. Um, I think one of the highlights for a coach is when you get surrounded by top draw talent, and that's what we've got. I'm really looking forward to getting to know them a little bit more than just shaking hands after a game. Um, as I said, the, I, we think the game's going to be really competitive. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, it's, it's, I think it's going to be a great occasion. I think the big thing is as well, you know, the atmosphere is going to be terrific. The game is sold out. So we're all looking forward to it. We're going to come right down here in front. My check, my check. Hey, it works. <clears throat> Guan Lumpur with The Athletic. How you doing? This one's for the players. So as an ex-athlete slash current athlete myself, music's very important for me in the locker room. I have two questions. One, what song is on before the game for both of you guys? And is there one player on your team who you do not want on the ox court before the game? Yeah, you know. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't think my teammates would want me on the ox cord. Uh, I, I enjoy some more relaxing music, you know, like Taylor Swift, Justin Bieber, uh, some country music. So all of those things combined uh, adds for a pretty bad recipe for a hype up locker room experience. But uh, in Nashville, it's, it's usually Daniel Lovitz on the ox. Um, here in the All-Star game, I'm curious. I'm curious to see who's going to take, take that responsibility and, and see if they can uh, pump us all up. I'm going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, in, a, in our locker room is, is uh, Mark Delgado and 
No, we don't listen. We, we listen different type of music. We go with more hip hop, reggaeton, and that kind of stuff. But yeah, I'm looking forward to to see who's gonna be the brave guy to talk the, like the, the 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 leadership in the in the music. You know. Thank you. Um, we're gonna go online for one question. Um, so if we're prepared for the audio, uh, our next question is going to go to Laurel. Laurel, can you hear us okay? Your mic is unmuted. Go ahead and ask your question. Oh, I think we're having trouble with Laurel. Why don't we, as we work on that, we'll come right here in the middle. Um, yeah, hi, Phil West from The Striker. Uh, this is for all three of you, actually. Um, you're unified for these next couple of days here, but then you're also going into a pretty keen playoff race against each other. So just wondering what kind of things, not like your spies necessarily, but what kind of things do you take from this experience back to your teams? Well, we go to Nashville at the weekend, so they're going to play a full 90. <laughs> no, it's, uh, we've just been talking about it actually I've looked at everybody's fixtures and it seems it's going to be like last year when we went to the we went to the Galaxy on the last game and if we won we went to fourth if we lost we went out the playoffs I don't think it's going to be any, any different than that so uh, it's going to go right down to the wire for sure yeah and they assured me that they're going to draw on the weekend so that's great <laughs> so that's amazing <laughs> All right, we're going to try again on uh, the Zoom. Tim Sullivan, your line is now open. Tim? I think we might be having audio issues in the room. All right, we'll go to our next question in the room, right over here in the middle. Yeah, I have two questions. Hi, Javier. Hi, Walker. Uh, the first one is for Javier. Um, para ti, ¿qué pensaste cuando viste, lo mencionaste ahorita, que vas a ser el capitán de la MLS siendo mexicano, habiendo jugado en Chivas y, y bueno, eh, jugando contra la liga de tu país. ¿Qué, ¿Qué fue lo que pensaste y qué sientes en este momento al respecto de eso? Eh, uf, lo puse en cuanto, en cuanto acabé mi entrenamiento, que fue cuando me di cuenta que lo había puesto la, la, la MLS, y lo estábamos hablando también ahí con mis compañeros. Muy agradecido, agradecido, la verdad agradecido, este, obviamente contento y feliz y también obviamente que no se... No quiero que todo esto salga de, de, la, de la perspectiva que se merece. ¿no? Obviamente, bueno, siempre tiene que haber un capitán y puede ser nada más en la representación de los jugadores, pero bueno, cuando estás en un MLS All Star o en cualquier equipo, todos pueden ser líderes, todos pueden dar muchísimo, muchísimo gente de casi de todo el, el equipo que estamos jugando. Aquí son capitanes en sus, en sus equipos. Así que, al fin de cuentas, la capitanía es algo que, que se da porque es el parte del juego y no tiene que darme ningún trato especial en lo, en lo absoluto, ni mucho menos, pero simple y sencillamente tomarlo con, con la con la debida responsabilidad, la debida, la debida perdón, humildad y, y obviamente eternamente agradecido de poder, como lo dije en la, en la pregunta anterior, ¿no? que es hasta un poquito como, como surrealista también ser mexicano, jugar contra la liga mexicana, representando la liga este, eh, americana aquí siendo mexicano. Entonces, créeme que nada más palabras de muchísimo agradecimiento, de muchísima humildad, pero que, que exacto, que no porque sea capitán significa que, 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 que tenga un poquito más de valor o menos valor que nadie. ¿no? Um, because we're having some Zoom uh, audio issues here in the room, I understand you can hear those questions online. We're not hearing them here in the room, so we have a submission um, from Cincinnati, and it is to Coach Heath. Mm -hmm. um, the question is from Laurel, and she wanted to know, with Brandon Vasquez being a late addition to replace Tati Castellanos, what has been your impression of Brandon's rise this season? Well, I think like everybody, I, I remember uh, Brandon from the early days at, at Atlanta. When my son was there playing with him, and he used to speak really highly of, of Brandon. So it's been a, it's a gradual sort of uh, a gradually him getting to the top where he's got at this moment in time, and he's playing exceptionally well at the moment at this moment in time, developing into a really good centre forward. He's big, he's strong, he's quick, he's athletic. So yeah, he's doing really really well at this moment in time, and he's worked really hard for this opportunity. It's what well deserved for him. Thank you so much. Thank you, Laura Tech, for texting in that, that question. We've got a question over here, and then we'll have time for one more. Uh, Walker, I wanted to ask you about the attacking talent on your team. Obviously, you're sitting next to Chicharito here. I wanted to ask you in particular about number 10 attacking midfielders on this roster and, and Emmanuel Reynoso, who you'll play at this weekend, and kind of the attributes that, that those guys have, and in particular, Ray. Yeah, I think uh, in our first little meeting here, coach was basically saying, you know, we have 10 number 10s, maybe we'll just go out with all of them on the field, um, which would be really fun for me to watch, actually. I would love to see uh, 
maybe we could switch positions at some point tomorrow. Um, we'll see what happens. But no, it's 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 so fun to be able to watch these guys live and in training, and especially when we take the field Wednesday together. So much talent, um, and I, I hope that they'll all gel on the field. Creative minds, creative feet. I mean, there should be some pretty special connections that that take place on the field. Our last question is going to go to Drake Hills. Drake. Uh, this question is for Walker. Drake Hills with the Tennessean. Um, third all-star appearance you know in your career curious from your perspective the the similarities or maybe even the differences in the progression of the league um, at each appearance and maybe the events and you know, not just on the field but uh, off the field the, the events the experiences and new teammates as well e each game is different each game is uh, a lot of fun a lot of quality I think the biggest difference is obviously shifting from we played Atletico Madrid uh, in Orlando in 2019, and it was competitive. You know, you're wanting to, to prove that you can play at a high level, but uh, the competitiveness on the field last year um, in, in LA against League MX was definitely a new step um, in terms of the competition. And then uh, Orlando was also, I believe, the first time that they had revamped the Skills Challenge, um, and they, they brought that to life. And it's a lot of fun. You get to watch guys try and score crazy bikes and scissor kicks, which I expect to see from uh, Chicharito here tomorrow. Um, yeah, maybe maybe a little celebration or two, a little shimmy. I don't know what you do, but we'll see something from him tomorrow. Um, but it's a fun event. You know, it, it makes it fun for the players when you can watch guys uh, showcase their talent. So I'm excited. Each year is an honor, and uh, just happy to be here again. Well, thank you so much to our all-star participants. We really appreciate your time, and best of luck on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, everybody.